What's up everyone? So I am super excited for this project that I finally got to accomplish. I've been wanting to do this for a very long time, but I was finally able to build a Pentium 3 retro gaming PC that will run Windows 98 and Windows XP. And I am super excited about this. I've wanted to build a Pentium 3 PC quite a few years now I just never decided to actually go ahead and bite that bullet until now and here's the video so here's all the parts that I'm going to use for my Pentium 3 PC build first up we have got our main board motherboard and it is a server process I mean wow server motherboard so it's got two processor slots um, an AGP slot and then of course pure IDE for a video card I grabbed this Asus FX 5900 and I love how it uses a Molex power connector and then I ended up getting a new EVGA power supply and then we've got our sound blaster live here I grabbed this guy at a thrift store for a buck um, for our DVD drive just grabbed a uh, Philips from a computer that I had lying around and then for storage I have got a 400 gig Seagate and then an 8 gig Seagate that I actually took out of an old Xbox. So RAM, I ended up getting some uh, PC133 uh, RAM from eBay. And then I'm going to throw it all in this Rosewill Galaxy case. It actually is a pretty sleek looking case. It's, uh, it's on the cheap side, but I actually kind of like the look of it. So first thing we're going to do is get the power supply installed. So I already screwed the other three screws in so it's just gonna deal with this last one here and make sure that's good so I wanted to comment about this power supply since it is for newer PCs you get a lot of cords you don't need like this CPU plug yeah you don't need that and then you have a ton of PCI and SATA cords so PCI don't need it SATA that can come in handy if we have an adapter but we do need the motherboard power and the Molex power. I'm glad this case actually, I mean, this power supply actually did still have Molex connectors on it since it's not modular. But yeah, all of this stuff we don't really need. So next up, we're going to go ahead and get this DVD drive installed. So remove the front panel. This just slides in. Maybe it's actually a pretty good fit. So I want to line that up and there we go. That's good. So I went ahead and got that screwed in. So let's move on to mounting the hard drive. So I'm going to put the smaller 8 gig drive on top and just slide again right up here. And I want to make sure it doesn't bump that front fan. So cool. There we go. So let's go ahead and get the second one mounted. There we go. And I like to leave a space between the hard drives just so that there is better airflow um, from the front fan. So I went ahead and got the hard drives uh, screwed in now. And this is a Molex power connector for the front fan. And it has a pass through. So. I'm basically just gonna plug this into the hard drive and then plug the power into it. So let's go ahead and get that plugged in. There we go. That's not very much room to get this fan header over to the motherboard. I don't know if it'll reach. I think I have an extender lying around. So I came across my first uh, problem in this build. I was trying to remove these heat sinks to reapply thermal paste and I actually snapped this retention bracket just right here at the base connector just popped clean off as I was trying to remove it I I don't know what it is but talking 370 heat sinks are just hard for me to remove but yeah there's the other end so thankfully I had this uh, Foxconn heat sink fan combo that I uh, scavenged from this old compact over here so we were able to continue the build so got the motherboard put inside the case got the screw sockets lined up here and it looks nice, but I will say that I'm a little concerned about how close this uh, heatsink fan and uh, case fan are. 
I, I don't think it's going to be an issue, thankfully, but they are very close. So I'm going to go ahead and now install the RAM onto the motherboard. So PC133SD RAM. This isn't even dual. This isn't even DDR stuff yet, guys. This is how old this is. So the thing I do really enjoy about this RAM is that it's just easier to tell which way it needs to go. They have this extra little divot here. So unlike DDR where it just has one thing in the middle, one's longer, one's shorter, um, this one just has that extra little tell of letting you know which way it needs to go. So, it's kind of nice. I mean, it's not hard to install DDR, don't get me wrong, but it's still nice. So just go ahead and push this down, get this in. This is actually, this was actually really hard to get in. That's That was interesting, so we'll go ahead and get this second stick installed now. Next up we have our video card, the FX5900. So it's an AGP slot card, and I've never actually had an AGP card before. I went from onboard to PCI, back to onboard, and then to PCI Express. So I never actually used an AGP card before, so this is gonna be cool. And, I mean, it's not really that different. It just slides into the socket like normal. So there we go. Good fit, yep, there we go, cool. And then I'm going to hook up this Molex connector as I get wiring done later. So now we're just going to go ahead and get the Sound Blaster installed. Um, moved it down a slot from the video card to allow room for the fans, of course. Always want to have good ventilation. And there's that. So, yep, ventilation. So here's our wiring job. It's, um, it's not our final wiring job. I just wanted to get everything hooked up. Um, to turn the PC on, make sure everything runs. So I just turned on the power button and I'm not getting a video signal. Um, oh wait, yes, here we go. So it's detecting the processors. They're not at the right speed. And um, memory test, huh? Um, it looks like it's only picking up half the RAM I installed also. So let's go ahead and go into the BIOS. Mmm, legacy BIOS, I love it. So it looks like we need to set our front side bus frequency. Um, or there's a CPU speed. Okay, there we go. So these are supposed to be 1000 megahertz CPUs that I've installed, I've got installed that came with the motherboard originally. So, mmm, lots of options here. Um, you know what, I don't want to spend too much time with the BIOS right now. Let's just go ahead and make sure we can actually boot from stuff it's actually uh, trying to detect everything it's actually frozen here there we go so there's our hard drive and our DVD drive nice so everything looks like it's good to go so we're just gonna go ahead and start to install Windows so I went ahead and got computer to boot from the DVD drive. This is the Windows 98 startup menu. And I actually have come across a couple of problems here. The um, hard drive that I'm using from the original Xbox actually ended up being locked. I thought I had unlocked it before putting it in. So I went upstairs and unlocked it again and uh, tried again, but unfortunately it was the same results. Hard drive is locked. I can't install to it. So I went ahead and installed that hard drive from that old compact and voila, here we go, we can install Windows. So I'm not going to bore you guys with every minute of the installation of Windows 98, but I decided to just go ahead and film parts of that, so here's the beginning and the end of the format process, and let's go ahead and get started. Here's the original Windows 98 splash screen initialization and of course you gotta tell it where to install it so voila oh this screen this brings back memories Windows just got better <laughs> anyway so 
now that we've uh, kind of fast forwarded through the Windows 98 install, it's time to boot it up for the first time, make sure everything actually works. Got to get ready to run Windows for the first time. Up, oh, up, oh, yay, hey, I forgot that we need to do initial uh, setup still. That's great. So, name, Ryan, of course, and company. Well, that would be Arcades Games. <laughs> yes. Now, I don't know what's up with all the flies. So, now that we got initial setup out of the way, reboot into Windows 98 again, and... There it is. Installing all those plug and play devices. And here is the classic home screen of Windows 98 with its horrible little pop up to tell you about how Windows 98 is different than Windows 95 or discovering Windows 98. Yeah, whatever. So let's double check, make sure everything is being detected properly. We've got Family 6, 1022 megs of RAM, perfect. And then Device Manager, we are missing our sound card and obviously our graphics driver. Everything else is working great. So I'm going to go ahead and get those installed now. So I got our sound card installed and our graphics driver installed, and now I'm using Direct Capture, so let's take a listen. Ah, that sound is beautiful. So first thing I'm going to do is test DOS sound compatibility with uh, one of my favorite DOS games of all time, Command & Conquer here. So this is one of the reasons why this retro build came into existence was to play the original DOS version of this game. So let's go ahead and get it up and running and see what that looks like. Please work. Center. Yes! Center. Yes! Center. Yes! Heck yes. Alright. I'm going to skip the install and we're going to go straight to playing. So excited right now. Okay, new game, GDI, that's the disc I have in. Let's just play the first mission, see how this goes. Are you picking this up? No one cares, Shepard. Shut up. Yes! Chubby DOS Command and Conquer graphics. I love it so much. Let's turn up the game speed here. Oh, this runs so good. I love this. I love this so much. Oh, these old icons, I love them. Build the barracks. Oh, this game speed is perfect. Um, I'm actually going to um, see how fast this processor can actually run this DOS version, though. Let's, uh, let's crank up the speed. So when you turn it up to the fastest speed, it's basically unlocked, so it'll just run the game as fast as your processor can go. And as you can see, things are like instantaneous. This is awesome. This isn't even on the uh, 1.4 gigahertz uh, Tualatin CPUs that I have uh, coming in the mail either. This is just the one. This is just one gigahertz. Oh, it's so good. I love it. So you can of course play this game on Windows like 95, 98, and like they had the upgraded version, Command and Conquer Gold, but. I don't know, I just love this original version. I haven't played it in years, but it's just so great. All right, I had to pull myself away from Command & Conquer because I did want to test out something that required uh, 3D acceleration, test out this graphics card. So I just decided to throw in Episode 1 Racer. It's not the most demanding game, but it is a fast paced game. So let's see how well it does. This is the perfect hardware to run it on. I've never been able to get this game to work on modern operating system so it's been a long time since I've played the PC version and 
everything's loading up and playing just fine and oh this is so great okay new racer ice let's go I'm using mouse and keyboard controls um, so this is probably gonna suck but whatever let's just go ahead and get started loads pretty good these cutscenes though oh it looks so pretty um, let's do this Oh, I need to play this game again. We're, we're totally going to stream this game to completion one of these nights. Promise. And then I want to do a comparison video between all three versions of this game at some point. That'd be so fun. N64, Dreamcast, and PC. With Dreamcast actually being the last version that came out. Yeah, this runs really good. So now that I've got games running like I wanted to, I went ahead and installed Windows XP just so I get that dual boot, it lets me do a little more advanced things on here. And the day after I finished that, I actually got in my new 1.4 GHz Tualatin Pentium 3s. They're the best of the Pentium 3 line. So I went ahead and got those installed, but while I did that, I accidentally snapped the other retention clip and I was left with no heatsink, so I decided to go ahead and melt them together again with a iron. And they're actually holding in place, and I'm really surprised by it. I didn't think this would actually work, but they're holding, and the computer is able to boot. Here is the full boot process. And now I got the dual boot. I could choose between XP and Windows 98. So we're just going to boot into XP. And this is literally all real time on how long it takes to boot Windows XP with these dual processors. there we go there is almost the full boot cycle this is with a few programs installed at startup even and there we have it that is full boot so just to show you guys that everything's being detected properly we're just gonna go into um, computer properties here and the motherboard actually read these as Pentium 2's but they show up as Pentium 3's on Windows XP they're showing the full 1.4 gigahertz and I actually have them overclocked to almost 1.5 at the moment um, actually, let me go ahead and uh, show you the task manager here so you can see that it actually detects both of them properly. So as you can see, there's both CPUs. And I kind of wanted to see what modern internet would run like on this, and it was actually a real big pain to get this to run because um, Pentium 3s don't have the SSE2 extent instruction set, so modern web browsers actually don't work on Pentium 3s anymore. So I had to find an old build of Firefox, and I hate Firefox, but it's the only thing I know that would actually run. And so I decided to try out watching a YouTube video, and once I was actually able to get the page to load right, um, it, it, it looked like this. It, it's not, it's, it's pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's pretty bad. Just, if you're at 144p, it runs well, but it, you can't really, see much anymore and when you crank it up to even 480p it starts running like a slideshow it's pretty bad oh it's so glorious I'm just uh, I'm just watching an honest trailer for doom real quick here um, but yeah so when you turn things to full screen it just gets even worse it's literally one frame of like a minute here <laughs> oh it's so bad Pentium 3's are not meant for modern web browsing it's pretty sad that the modern web actually is more resource intensive than 2003 through 2004 video games so even at 144p like you cannot watch anything in full screen on YouTube at the moment it just Oh, it's so funny. It's so bad. Um, but yeah, you minimize it and it's able to run it again at 144p. And you can even switch it to theater mode, even. And it'll run. Although it does drop some frames on theater mode. But yeah, don't, don't even bother with full screen. It's 
yeah, it's just not going to work. <laughs> like, these processors just are not built for modern web browsing. So here's the final look at the inside of the computer. I've swapped out a few parts, added in a network card for Windows XP, um, cable managed everything more thoroughly. So I actually put in a second 400 gig IDE hard drive instead of the uh, one from that compact, but there is our Pentium 3 gaming build. So there it is, guys. I'm so happy to have this guy that I can use for streams now. And thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you enjoyed it, please share it. Helps me grow the channel, and that is honestly the biggest priority that we're doing here. Just get content out there. Um, once again, thank you so much. You're all awesome. And we will, of course, see you back next video.